Hi folks, welcome to video number eight in my uh, current series of 10 videos. This one is about exercise and the stress that gets caused in the body when you over-exercise and the impacts that has on your general health and well-being. Hope you enjoy. Okay then, let's get into stress and exercise. Instead of doing a separate video here on stress and exercise and so on, what I'm going to do is combine things into this one video. You may recall from the video three, where we talked about leaky gut, that was definitely a form of stress, a sort of stress that causes systemic inflammation. Now there's also another form of stress. I tend to call this the mental stress, mainly because it's to do with our thoughts of what's going on in our brain. And this would be things like um, anxiety, depression, worrying about relationships or work or money. These are all mental sorts of stresses. And there are definitely things that you can do for that. I work with meditation as a primary means of reducing uh, mental stress. But of course, there are various medications and you can get counseling. I mean, there's many ways to address that. I just happen to choose meditation in my program to address the major concerns of that kind of stress. We know for a fact that stress of any kind is bad for you. It affects the way you think, the way you operate in many different ways. It affects your hormones. It creates systemic inflammation. I mean, there's nothing good about stress, so we need to do everything we can to reduce all forms of stress, whether that be stress caused from diet, whether it be from over-exercising, or whether it's some form of mental stress. They're all bad, and we've got to look at them and try and figure out a way to fix them all. What we're really trying to do is become the very best version of ourselves, and in order to do that, we definitely need to reduce our stress in our life, uh, preferably eliminate it. I'm not going to promise that we can do that. That's pretty tough to do. But certainly by working in these three different areas, we can reduce the amount of stress and therefore the effect it's having on our body. The ancestors from which we were evolved definitely had a different life to us. I mean, clearly they were hunters and gatherers. They spent a lot of their time actually trying to either find food or kill food gather food, whatever, and every now and again they had to fight for their life or avoid being uh, eaten by some kind of animal or something. So the kinds of exercises that these folks did was a little different. Um, for a fact, obviously they didn't go to the gym or do specific workouts or have stand-up chairs or anything like that. I mean, basically, they got fit by doing the things that they needed to do to survive. This would include things like uh, squatting and crawling, jumping, hanging, throwing things, pushing, pulling. All these kinds of activities were used every day to survive. And so they actually built up pretty impressive physiques and body compositions just by virtue of staying alive. And obviously what we want to try and do is to mimic that kind of um, exercise so that we can be in the best physical condition that we would be in. Now it turns out that uh, in this day and age, uh, we've become something of a sedentary society, if you will. I believe I've seen statistics that say the average person sits for about 13 hours a day, uh, sleeps for about eight hours, and actually moves around for about three. So obviously it's a sed sedentary lifestyle. Now, a sedentary lifestyle is going to affect you in a number of different ways. First of all, by sitting down all day, you're not exercising the necessary muscles and joints and tendons that are used to support your body. A lot of your core muscles are inactive during the sitting stage. So as that happens, we become less able to support our bodies. We become less fit. And of course, it brings in all sorts of other things. Too much inactivity will affect our hormone balance. Uh, it will tend to upregulate our fat storing genes, downregulate our fat burning genes. So we would put, likely to put on a lot more weight. It can also affect our blood pressure. It could 
It can also affect our leptin signaling. This is a hormone, of course, that affects our appetite, lets us know when to eat and when we're full and so on. And so we have to make sure that leptin is signaling correctly and sitting around all day has a tendency to mess up those signals. Now, when we talk about activity here, I'm going to be talking about intentional physical activity. It's generally considered that if you're doing aerobic exercise, you want to be um, having, you want to be exercising at a rate somewhere around 180 minus your age. That's for the heartbeat. Because if you make that kind of exercise a repetition, eventually your body is in a much better state during the rest time when you're not even exercising. So if we look at uh, a long distance runner or an athlete that's doing marathons and things like that, then they may have a resting heartbeat of around 40, as low as 40. For the average American, my understanding is that the average heartbeat is around 72. And then for people that have diabetes or are overweight, obese, etc., they could have a resting heartbeat as high as 100 or even more. And so that causes an enormous stress on the body. So that's another reason why we want to be getting some intentional activity, but we don't want to be overdoing it. We need to have the right sort of aerobic activity that's right for our age. As long as we do the right kind of aerobic activity, then we're going to strengthen our bones and our joints and our connective tissues. And basically we're gonna be in a whole lot better shape, which obviously is the objective. I don't know about you, but when I go to the gym, I see a lot of what I would call um, chronic cardio practitioners. Um, they're going as hard as they can. You know, they're sweating like crazy. They've got a red face. They're out of breath. And that's really not good. Obviously, that's creating a lot of stress in their body. When I go to the gym, it seems that uh, chronic cardio is perhaps the most prevalent form of cardio going on as bad as that may sound, but I see people, you know, running very, very fast on the treadmills, you know, they're red in the face, they're out of breath, and basically just going as hard as they can. This creates a condition called chronic physical stress. Now, chronic physical stress has an awful lot of downside to it. It can affect your hormone balance, it can affect your joints and your muscles and so on and it can cause systemic inflammation because there's so much um, cortisol running through your body, which of course, as we know, is a stress hormone that we use for fight or flight. And we really don't want to be putting ourselves in a fight or flight situation unless the need arises. And clearly that need does not arise on a treadmill. So that type of activity is definitely going to add to your stress and make things worse. As I said before, we. Our ancestors weren't on treadmills and doing things like this. They just got fit doing what they needed to do to survive. And the closer we can come to that type of activity, I believe the better position we'll be in. Unfortunately, with modern society today, uh, you can get away with doing no activity. Well, at least economically, physically not so much, but from an economic perspective, you could pretty much go through life without any additional exercise or activity. And again, of course, that has a negative effect on us. In summary, the kind of stress that we get from chronic exercise puts us in a continuous state of fight or flight, increases our cortisol, causes a lot of stress within the body. Uh, we typically need to do lots of carbs to get over that. Our body starts to crave carbs and we know that carbs are not good for you. So this ends up driving all sorts of diseases, the ones we've mentioned in all the previous um, videos. Apparently it can also increase the free radicals in your body by 10 to 20 times. So again, that's not a good thing, leads to cell mutation, potentially to cancer. So the bottom line is that you really don't want to be getting overstressed in your exercise situation. It can also suppress the immune system. And one of the things that uh, I've noticed at the gym is that people get this concept called burnout and then they get burnt out and then they get sick. And the reason for this is because their immune system has been downregulated by all the stress going on in their body. So our objective here then is to mimic our ancestors. And the best way we can do that is to have a certain amount of aerobic exercise at the prescribed 180 minus your age 
heartbeat. This would be the equivalent of our ancestors maybe going on a scouting mission, looking for food, and just generally moving at a comfortable pace. Every now and again, we should do some sprints. Now, that could be a running sprint, or it could be sprint on a bicycle. And this should be kept to a minimum. It shouldn't be done all the time, uh, certainly not on a regular basis, but maybe once a week, once every two weeks, just to get a good sprint in, keeps everything turning over correctly in the body. And then there is going to be four exercises that I have in my program that are full body exercises, the body resistance exercises, and they come as close to mimicking what our ancestors used to do to survive. So there are four exercises. One of those exercises is push-ups. The second exercise is planks. I do two types of planks, one on my elbows and one on each side. And then the next one is pull-ups. Do a certain number of pull-ups. And then the final one is squats. And I find that I can do one set of those exercises in about 15 minutes. So I can do two sets in 30 minutes, which is, is plenty long enough. And I believe when I have completed that, I have done the best job I can do of mimicking the way our ancestors used to move around and keep fit. So if we go about things in the right way, that would mean um, eating correctly. For me, that would be uh, nutritional ketosis, eating in certain uh, eating windows, which would be intermittent fasting. And then we make sure we get the right exercise and we manage our sleep and we manage our stress, we bring all these things together and we start to get ourselves into shape pretty quickly. In fact, I met all my goals through this procedure, which uh, of course ended up being the Be Lean for Life program. Through this program, I was able to meet my goals. I ended up with a body fat percentage of 11, 11%, and um, I found my six pack abs that have been hidden away under fat for quite some long period of time. And uh, my energy was very much better and I had many less uh, mood swings. And I didn't start on this program until I was 68. So it's never too late to start and I would look forward to working with you to help you achieve your goals as well.